Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. It's been a while since I've done anything on this Marantz 7 clone preamp because I've been away. But you might recall that the last point that I got to was hooking it up and I had a fair bit of hum. Unfortunately with this thing it's kind of been like one step forward and ten steps backwards which is really frustrating. Um, hopefully we'll get there in the end but we shall see. Really I've gone about building this thing the wrong way. Uh, in, I thought I'd do the simple parts and work up to the complicated part. What I should have done was build the preamp board first and test that and get it working and then build the other parts, add the other parts on. Because basically what happened is I put it all together and I have this hum. So now I've got to troubleshoot the hum, which means I've got to backtrack a whole heap of my work. So if I'd have built the preamp board first and got that working, then I added something else in and the hum appeared, then I'd know that that's where my problem is. So I've got the inputs shorted to ground so basically the only thing that's in circuit now is this board and I have still got a reasonable amount of hum. Now I've mentioned a, a number of times in the past that the directions for this thing are vague to the point of being non-existent so basically they say build the amplifier. However one thing that the directions did say was to keep the sensitive parts away from the power transformer. What does away mean? I don't know. This is the second kit that I've ever built. Um, the first one being the Dynaco ST120, but the Dynaco ST120, it told you exactly what to do and where everything goes. This thing, you have to work out where everything goes yourself. There's no holes drilled in it, in these base plates or anything. Um, the only holes are for the connectors. So there's nothing to tell you where this is meant to go. There is a rough sort of a layout that indicates where things could go uh, in the manual, but then there's a photograph which has got a completely different layout. So I thought that I would, to the best of my ability, copy the layout from the photograph because I thought, well, here's one that they've built. This must work. So that's what I tried to do, but it's not working. So anyway, as I mentioned, the manual did say that you need to keep the sensitive parts away from the power transformer because they will pick up um, potentially hum from the power transformer. And I think that that is part of my problem because I can tell what's sensitive by this. Now look at this. I'll just bring the speaker up so you can see. And if I do the other channel, You might even hear there's a bit of AM radio being picked up on that as well. So my finger is a um, my finger is a calibrated AM receiver. So anyway, the channel that has the worst hum on it is this one here. So you'll see that this point here is very, very sensitive. It's right next to the power transformer. So what I did is I rotated the power transformer 90 degrees just to get these tails out of the way um, so that I've got a little bit more room to work with. And I just want to show you something. So just yank the power, pull the mains out. I've got this uh, aluminium channel here. And if I just pop this in here, in this way, get those out of the way, put that down there. And we put the power back on. So the hum is much reduced. It's basically the same on both channels. So um, that indicates to me that that is the problem. How am I going to go about fixing this? Um, I'm not really sure at this point. I think what I want to do is unmount the amplifier board so that I can move it around. I just want to experiment with having it in different positions. Um, 
yes I've got this little channel that I can use as kind of like a shield but I'm not convinced that that in itself is going to be sufficient so the next step will need to be getting this to a point where I can have this board working with an input signal going into it I just won't worry about the relay board at the moment um, it's likely also that I'm going to have to redo all of these harnesses um, you can see I have got the step attenuator mounted um, but I made a meal of the harness so I'm going to have to redo this harness anyway um, but that's okay because also I wasn't too happy with the way that I did these um, these are the first ones that I did and I don't have a lot of experience in harnessing I've done a lot of PCB work but not so much with harnessing and I'm not really happy with my work here anyway so I'm not too distressed about having to do that again as much as a pain it is as it is so anyway when we come back um, you'll see what I've done okay guys we are back so as you can see I've basically gutted this uh, cabinet and I've pulled everything out so basically all we have now is the preamp board and so if I turn it on and just plug the amp in just wait for it to warm up okay so basically what you can see is if I um, I'll just hold this speaker up here if I move this board see what happens I think I'm holding the wrong speaker that's better see what happens when I move that channel next to the power transformer so you can see what's going on there so um, by the way I think that high-pitched um, sound you can hear I think that's the transmitter from the wireless mic um, because I wasn't hearing that when I tested this 10 minutes ago and it sounds like a wireless kind of transmission so I think it's um, I think it's picking up the, the transmission for the wireless mic um, so anyway this as I mentioned is really what I should have done in the very first place is just have just the preamp board and the power and that's it so this does seem to indicate to me that I'm going to have to change the layout but what I'll do next is I need to wire up an input to this test it with an input get it to a point that I have something known working and then iteratively add things on so that's where we'll go from here okay everyone we are back that's a little bit of daft punk can't do any more than that because of copyright but um, yeah so we have got a line in wired in now just on one channel and it is certainly running a lot quieter than it had been um, so yes I can hear a high-pitched whine but that is definitely the wireless microphone that is causing that um, so yes this is running much quieter than it was now it has got a little bit of low level hum and a little bit of kind of hiss um, might be just the way it is we'll see but um, it is much 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 better than it was so that kind of does indicate that we need to have the board around this way and I dug out that um, picture that I found in the service manual which is this one here which does give a suggested layout as I mentioned I kind of copied the photograph that also came with this which is a completely different layout the reason that I did that is because this uh, I'm just going to turn this off before I stick my fingers in there um, and I'll turn the amp off as well that's better this input selector came with this tail and the tail is this long 
Now, this layout here suggests having the input selector up here, which would be up here. So if you have it up there, the tail can't reach the input selector. So that, I think that was kind of what put me off doing this. But in a lot of ways, that makes a lot more sense to have the input selector here because it means that these cables will be nice and short going straight to the RCAs, which is what you want, of course. Uh, and then to the input of the board. So it'll keep all of that audio stuff much shorter, which um, is good. Um, length is not such a huge problem at audio frequencies. It's more so to the point of running stuff around the mulberry bush is not ideal. So anyway, I'll have to make up a um, extension for this tail and also this is the power feed that makes those LEDs function um, which is a bit of a pain but anyway the point is is that we've proved that this thing we've got a baseline to build on now which we never had before I'm comfortable that th this can be a baseline so I need to work now towards getting things mounted where they should be I need to get this board mounted back on its um, aluminium plate which means that I'm going to have to drill a new set of holes again in this plate. Might look like Swiss cheese when I'm done but the great thing about having this plate is that none of those holes will be seen because the only holes in the bottom panel are to hold the plate up so that uh, is certainly a good thing and um, yeah so I'll just wire it up with just one input I think and we'll go from there. So that is a bit of encouragement. Let's hope that we don't have too many more setbacks, but let's start heading in that direction and I'll come back when I've got something more to show you. Okay guys, we are back and we've made some progress finally. So just a few things to tell you about this. I'll just turn the power off so I can point to things. So redoing these harnesses was not as catastrophic as I thought. So as you can see, I've redone the layout according to the recommendation in the manual, which is really what I should have done in the first place, but I got thrown by that photograph, okay? So now we've got, here's the amplifier section here, here's the power supply section next to the power transformer. Here's the input selector board and here's the output delay. So um, my base plate does kind of look like Swiss cheese, although you can't see too many of the holes with the boards on it. I'm so glad we've got this base plate arrangement because I was just able to drill new holes to allow me to put these boards in these positions. So when I put the input selector board here, the harnesses that I've already made, all I had to do was shorten them to um, go to these RCA jacks on the back. So that ended up not being a huge amount of grief. Now I know I said I was going to basically just wire up the minimum to get it working. The problem is there was just so many bits of wire floating around um, that it was actually not that much more work just to pretty much wire the whole thing up. So the input selector is wired in. Uh, that worked out quite nicely and it is working. Um, so I'll just need to tidy this harness up here. We'll need a bit of a tidy up. Now because this input selector is here, this is the ribbon cable that goes to the input switch, which is obviously not long enough because um, there's the connector there. So I just made this little um, shorting link to get one of the relays to turn on so that I could test the amplifier. So um, channel four, this one over here is turned on by having this shorting link in, um, but this is a JST um, connector. I've ordered some crimps and a new housing from RS 
could take a week or maybe even two to turn up so I can't go any further or I can't finish at least until I get those parts coming in. I've also got to wire in the power lead and um, tidy these harnesses up so there's still a couple of things to do but it's basically working. Um, I've taken it upstairs, put it on some decent speakers and had a bit of a listen to it. It doesn't sound too bad. It does sound a little bit, um, muddy's not quite the right word, but a little bit bassy. However, I was testing it on a Quad 405-2 and they are known to be a little bit bassy. So uh, I'm not especially um, surprised at that. Uh, but I want to show you something else. So let me just plug this in. Just have to let it warm up again, obviously. Now, because I'm only using my test speakers, I don't have any decent speakers down here in the workshop, unfortunately. So obviously I don't get the best reproduction out of these, but you can hopefully hear, if I put this next to the mic, hear that sort of like high pitched kind of whining sound. It sounds like a, like a digital kind of sound. And um, yeah, it sounds pretty awful when you put it on decent speakers. However, Watch this. It basically killed it. So this thing is really, really sensitive for um, RF pickup, I'd say. So it really needs to have that shield on it. Um, I don't know whether part of that might be these valves, these are really cheap Chinese 12AX7s. I don't have any others to test it with. So this is all I've got at the moment. Um, so yeah, definitely having the lid on does seem to get rid of that, that RF pickup. And you probably won't be able to hear it, but it does have a little bit of hum. Just in the process of tidying it up, I might be able to do something about that. Um, it's not a catastrophic amount of hum. I enjoyed listening to the amplifier or the pre-amplifier just in the testing that I've just done. But it would be nice if I could get that hum reduced a little bit. So anyway, I do need to do some more tidying up. Um, also, some of these these wires here for the from the power plant transformer can be shortened, so that will probably be a good thing to do. And also, one other thing I noticed in some early testing is that the um, pretty sure it was this heatsink here gets fairly warm. That's the heatsink for the. 12.3 volts but it's not 12.3 volts you remember it was about 10.2 so it's quite a bit low so I want to adjust that back up to 12.3 because it'll mean that it's dropping less through the regulator these both regulators are linear regulators so obviously you drop less power across the regulator it's going to get less hot and also we'll have you know the voltage that we're supposed to have um sorry 12.6 I think it's supposed to be so um yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with where we're at. I was really quite dejected at the beginning of this video because it just felt like I was getting nowhere. And I accept that um, some of that was because of my mistakes, but that's the whole purpose of these exercises is to learn from mistakes. So um, that's about all I want to show you now. As I said, I need to wait for these parts to come in and just do these last few tidy ups. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've got a Patreon. If you want to support this kind of content, you can support me over at Patreon, patreon.com slash audio nautica. Also, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And hopefully the next video on this M7C will be the last one. Bye for now.